What's going on, everybody? A snowy Super Bowl Sunday, and you know what it makes me think of? Some Detroit Tigers baseball. I have been dying to come back on here and talk some Tigers, uh, but I've been trying to think of the right stuff to do. Uh, I, this video, I just, just kind of want to touch on just where I'm standing with the, going into this season, some of the players they've signed, the way the roster currently looks, and then um, spring training right before the games begin, or maybe a couple games in. I'll do a spring training preview uh, to talk about some position battles and stuff like that. So, first things first, coming into the 2018 season, uh, I got my uh, 2018 season uh, opening day tickets yesterday, so I'm going to be down there March 29th. Pretty fucking hype about that. Um, and that's what they want to talk about. Opening day tickets are selling at an all-time record low pace. So if you're looking to go down there, this is the time right now to buy tickets. I went down there in 2016, and my brother and I, it was against the Yankees, my brother and I, um, we, we probably paid a shade over 100 bucks for tickets. There's tickets still available at 85 90 bucks uh, because no one's buying it, because no one wants to go down there and see this team. Now, here's why you should go down there and watch this team this year. Compared to years past, when you know everyone, I remember the year they signed Prince Fielder. Well, the year they signed Prince Fielder, it was the biggest opening day crowd ever. Spring training games were selling out, and like two, three weeks in advance to after they signed Prince Fielder, people were so hyped about having Prince Fielder. Or like when they signed Pudge, or the 08 season when they got Miggy and Dontra Willis and Edgar Interia and Jock Jones, and everyone thought that team was going to be the most greatest fucking team of all time. And then Jock Jones gets shit shipped out after like 20 some games. He sucked. Dontra Willis wasn't good. Miguel Cabrera, uh, he was good. He led the AL in home runs that year, only because Carlos Quinton uh, got hurt at the end of the year. Uh, Pudge ended up getting traded, and Sheffield had a um, man year, and Edgar Renteria was gone after a season. So I mean that that year kind of you know went down the pooper real quick. But there was hype. I mean, every year it's like, okay, we got Prince. One year we got Victor. And then, you know, they're just coming off the pennant or just short of uh, going to the World Series. So there's a lot of hype and people want to go back down there and see this team win. Here's why I'm very excited for this season still. Yes, they don't have the names like they used to. Verlander's gone. J.D. Martinez is gone. Justin Upton is gone. You know, Miguel Cabrera had a, did not have a great year last year whatsoever. Victor Martinez is 39 and he's walking around on... Pretty soon it's going to be two prosthetic knees if he keeps up his pace. So the names aren't that sexy. But you still got Michael Fulmer. You still got Miguel Cabrera. Jamie Candelario looked awesome uh, in a month. I mean, his defense wasn't that great a third, but I think he's going to be a good third baseman. Nick Castellanos was awesome last year. So here's why. This is another reason I'm hyped. Unlike the years past where you're hyped for to see the new players play and you're hyped to see how good the Tigers are doing, there's a lot of interesting things about this team. One, you know, Victor Martinez, This is uh, how is he, is he going to bounce back? Is he done? Miguel Cabrera, I mean, he's 35. Look at Victor Martinez. He almost had an uh, MVP year when he was 36. So uh, he lost to Mike Trout. So look at that. And then all the position battles. You have all, for the first time ever, for the first time ever, the Tigers have so much youth. And so many guys are trying to figure out how to build a core around that this is a different kind of hype. This is a different kind of why are we watching. This is a different kind of, you know, nothing is guaranteed. Our spots aren't there. Uh, they're not there to, okay, this guy's here, this guy's here. How's Nick Cassiano's going to do and right? You know, is it going to affect his offensive numbers after coming up here? He hit 20 plus home runs. You know, Jamie Candelario. You know, he's going to have a fir his first full 162 opportunity at the big league hot corner. You know, uh, J uh, James McCann, you know, he was inconsistent last year but showed some good prowess uh, with the uh, power-wise. Uh, he had shown some flashes of that, and you know he's a stud behind the plate. And, you know, they signed Derek Norris and uh, as a spring training invite. And, you know, you got guys like uh, Jake Rogers, who's probably not going to come into the big leagues, but, you know, he's knocking on the door. Maybe if they're bad enough and he progresses enough, maybe he can make it, you know, MLB cup of coffee sometime this year. I, I doubt it. I doubt it. But I'm just saying you got that youth there. And then second base, you know, they signed Alexi and Marista. And then they got the, well, Lugo. Dixon Machado uh, is slated right now based off their 40 man to be their everyday second baseman. But who knows? Lugo, I have not looked up that much about him. I have not done my due diligence and research research to find out more about these prospects but that's another thing i'm super hype about the tigers for the first time since i can remember even in 2006 2005 2004 when i was very young 
You know, they had Verlander, Andrew Miller, and Can uh, Cameron Maben, and, you know, Nook Logan, you know, Grandy, uh, I guess was. Even with all those guys, they weren't, they didn't really have that good of a farm system. I mean, they hit on a few of them. You know, Verlander obviously being the guy they built around and um, had their success with. Um, you know, Maben, you can't call him a bust, but you know he's only been on the, he was only on the Tigers for you know a year, a season and a half, so he got stuff like that. But there was just so many guys, you know, over the Tigers farm systems the last 10, 15 years. You know, the Will Ledesmas and the Ryan Perrys and the Jacob Turners. Um, you know, the Chris Shettons, the Brent Clevelands, all these guys that the Tigers have had, the Nook Logans, all these guys that the Tigers have had that they have not been able to hit on, and they've just been ass. You know, shit, I can remember them trading uh, Luke French. Luke French was in, like another top 11 prospect of theirs who never amounted to shit uh, when they traded him for Jared Washburn in 2009. It's, it, they just never have had any kind of prospects you can get hype about. And now, you look at their, their top 10. Here's their top 10 according to Baseball America. Franklin Perez, who came over, he was the uh, main prospect in uh, the Justin Verlander trade. He, everything that I've heard about this guy, I've, I haven't watched much video, but everything I've heard about this guy is this guy is a frontline, top of the rotation, one-two arm. He's got electric stuff, just great stuff, When he's not even 20 years old yet. They expect this kid to be a stud. Alex Fiedo. Real hype about this kid. I mean, the Tigers' arm, the stable of arms that they've assembled, this is one thing I've really liked about Al Avila. And here's a little quick tidbit for you. When Dave Dombrowski left the Tigers, the Tigers had the 27th worth farm system. Alex Avila, or Alex Avila, Al Avila has now got them up to the 14th best. When he went to the Red Sox, he had the Red Sox had the 4th best farm system. They're now ranked 24th. That's one thing about Dave Dombrowski that people never really gave a shit about that guy is extremely good at giving you a window this wide to jump through this is your window of opportunity this is your chance to win a championship but when it came to sustainability players get older keep trading away more prospects keep having big more big name free agent contracts keep trading away what little prospects you have make bad trades like hernan perez and and uh jonathan crawford and just and jake thompson and uh who else? Corey Kniebel. You make those trades for guys like Franklin Perez or for fucking Frankie Rodriguez and uh, what was that fucking guy's name from the Cincinnati Reds? That uh, Alfredo Simon. That's what happens to your window. You know what this window is right here? This is the Detroit Tigers window. It's closed and it's dead bolted shut right now. You know what was a window this big? Because you had you know the Prince Fielders and Victor Martinez and Doug Fister and Sanchez when he was still good and you know that stuff. You know they go and they trade. Uh, Hernan Perez and Eugenio Suarez and Corey Kniebel and Jake Thompson, all these guys that are being contributors to their franchise. Well, not so much Jake Thompson, but Corey Kniebel, Hernan Perez, and, and, and uh, Eugenio Suarez for fucking sure. You know, all these guys that could have been contributors to the Tigers, they could have maybe used help, maybe speed up their rebuild a little bit. They didn't fucking Dabrowski trade them away for dog shit. So that's one thing I will give Alavila credit for. But Matt Manning, I've heard nothing but great things about him, and he's been floating around in the Tigers' top uh, 10 for the last couple of years. Bay Burroughs, Jake Rogers, Des Cameron, Isaac Paredes, who uh, I think Isaac Paredes, Duel Lugo, Christian Stewart are three guys that have the best shot to you'll see this year, especially Duel Lugo. He is, um, I, I, you know, Alexi Amarista. He's a nice little bat to have on the side. I mean, he's got a spring trading invite. Who knows if he makes the makes the roster? You know, Leonis Martin and uh, and Mike Fires were two signings I really liked this off season. Leonis Martin isn't that great with the stick, and uh, but in center field he's got legs. He's got uh, a really good glove, and he's got some range. You needed some solidification, even if it is someone like Leonis Martin who can't hit much because they had so many center fielders last year. They had no one that can consistently play the position. I mean, Mikey Mata could, um, but he. I would rather have him in left than center, to be honest with you. I mean, he's not a, a, a horrible center fielder, but Leonis Martin's a better center fielder than he is. And you get some guy that's got some uh, big league experience already in the position. He can help your young guys a little bit. You know, you can bump Matic over to left, keep Castellanos in the corner and hope no one hits it to him uh, for a little while until he gets his bearings a little bit. So I really like that. And then Mike Fires. Mike Fires was a sneaky good signing because you didn't sign it for much. One-year deal. A guy that, you know... 
He had a bad year last year, but you look at his career numbers. I mean, he's a guy that he's been he's been very consistent, good strikeout rate, doesn't walk a whole shit ton of guys. So I mean, if he can give you a, a, a good season, you know, maybe an ERA of upper threes, maybe low fours, and just give you innings. Right now, it isn't about having sexy stats. We don't want him to be a Cy Young winner. What we want is a guy to take the ball every fifth day. Well, you, what the Tigers need is someone to go out there and be consistent. Even if he is giving up 4, 410, 420 ERA, you know, it doesn't matter. If he can go out there and, and give you, you know, 160, 170 innings, and you're not sitting there, you know, rushing up some of your younger guys that you don't want in the big leagues yet, or, or going getting fucking Randy Wolf like that one season when they had absolutely no pitchers because they have their fucking farm system or their, their their rotation got depleted. That's fine, you know. Let him go out there. Let him let them lean on it because you know Jordan Zimmerman's been hurt a lot and he's very inconsistent. He he's no guarantee for 150 innings. You know you know that Daniel Norris is. The guy, he's very injury prone, and he's yet to give you thirty starts. And Matt Boyd is his stuff plays in consistently, so you don't know how he's gonna be for a full season. So someone like Mike Fires, you know, give you twenty nine, thirty one starts somewhere in there, give you one hundred eighty innings, one hundred seventy innings. That's fine. You know, that's why Ricky P. You know, his stats weren't that great. Uh, you know, uh, uh, off and on, and he'd have those high four ERA years and mid four ERA years, but they kept running him out in the fifth man spot. Why? Because he was never hurt. Because he was a guaranteed 170, 180 innings. And especially when you're in a position where you're not going to win right away, that's fucking paramount, man. You need someone out there that's that has an arm that you can rely on to eat and give you innings so you're not burning up. You know, you're not wasting a, a, a maybe even if he has a low rep prospect, someone to go get a, a, a trade for a pitcher because you need an arm. And, you know, you're not going out there wasting no more money trying to get someone just to give you innings. And that's what Mike Fires is. And, hey, say he catches lightning in the bottle and he pitches well. His first half, you fucking dump him. And then look what you got. You got something back for him. So I'm all for those kind of deals where you get those one year. Fuck, man. And then you get Leonis Martin. I'd go to say, Carlo, Carlos, God. I'd be like, hey, Carlos Gonzalez, what are you doing, man? You want to play for, you want to play? Or you want to sit there and watch uh, watch baseball games with us this year? So um, and go gave him a fucking one year deal to play right field for you. But anyways, that that's not gonna happen. But you know, that's I'm all for those kind of deals. That's one interest. That's another interesting thing about this team. They're in a position right now. That since nothing is guaranteed, since they're trying to build their core again, since they're trying to figure out who is going to be the future and who they're going to build around, and you know, this is an interesting thing. You're going to see a lot of temporary talent, but faces that is going to that you're hoping that does good, so you can trade to get more talent from them. So you know, basically, if, if everything goes right, you're going to be like the Astros, where you build this core, you draft. Altuve and Correa and Springer and Bregman, and you eventually build such a strong, tight core. Or you get Dallas Keuchel and get Lance McCullers. You know, you 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 build this such a tight core that you can go out and trade for someone like Garrett Cole and still have a top ten prospect system. You know, guys like Kyle Tucker and whatnot leading their system because they drafted so well because they've made so many smart trades. And acquiring guys for a talent that they didn't want. Or not that they didn't want, but they thought they could move on from it to acquire pieces. You know, this is where the Tigers need to do. Is draft well, because they have the number one overall pick. Draft well for a couple of years. You know, trade talent they don't feel is going to be with them, you know, for the for the long term. And they feel like they could benefit from trading from to add on to their squad. Build your farm system and hopefully you hit on these prospects. Because that is, at the end of the day... Prospects are prospects, and I'm not saying this batch of guys that have that the Tigers have accumulated is going to be the fucking you know the next Astros or the next Cubs, nothing like that. Um, but the position that they're in now, youth-wise, farm uh, farm system ranking-wise, talent-wise, that was another big thing. If you were the number one overall prospect in the Tiger system like the last ten years or so, you were like the fucking number twelfth in a good one. You know, or like even like a barely top 10 and a moderate one. Their talent pool was so thin. Their organizational depth was so thin. And I think right now you can look at through their levels of their farm systems and the talent there is a lot better and a lot more consistent throughout to where when someone looks at like someone like a Frankie, Frankie Perez, they're like, whoa, you know, you could put this guy in any farm system. He's a fuck top five. So, you know, they got that kind of that kind of talent, which I think if I'm going to lean on for them to hit, 
on something, I'm more confident about this crop of players than I am about, you know, when Jacob Turner was was fronting our, our fucking our farm system or when guys like Ryan Perry were considered a, a top five prospect, stuff like that. So I like I like this group of guys. And I'm, I'm just super hyped for this year. I mean, I'm, I'm so sick of fucking cold outside. I'm so sick of snow. I just want to go down to opening day. I want to go watch Michael Fulmer pitch, even though the Pirates are, are, are you know, it's going to be kind of hard to watch Pirates this year uh, because, you know, all the trades they made. But, hey, they're they're in the same position as us. You know, they wanted to make some moves, and they wanted to kind of revamp their core a little bit because they had a really, really good core there for a little while. They thought, you know, Bell and McCutcheon and Marte and, you know, Jung Ho Gung and Garrett Cole and Tyon, you know, I thought those guys were or glass down. They thought all those guys were going to be there for, you know, for a while. And, you know, they figured out, just, you know, they, they can't fucking beat the Cubs <laughs> and they can't beat the Cardinals. That was another thing, uh, you know, in the, in the division. So, but neither here nor there, you know, I'm just, I'm just hyped to see some baseball. I'm hyped to go to the team uh, to play, even though they're going to be bad. I'm still excited. You know, it's going to be a different, like I said, it's going to be a different kind of excitement. All of the youth that they have and all the position battles that they're going to be in and watching these kids grow and learn and seeing new constant new faces and you know when, when they start calling these guys up like you know the Isaac Paredes and the Perezes and stuff like that it's going to be it's going to be very interesting and just watching these guys grow and hopefully mature and you know blend into a core like you know the Escobar Masakis Hosmer Kane kind of thing hopefully you know you, you hit on these guys and they just blend and grow and you got a, a nice young core and it's just different you know you you're not spending, you know, two hundred million dollars on Prince Fielder and one hundred and eighty on Justin Upton and giving Verlander two fourteen and stuff like that. It's it's going to be a different blend, and this is the way it needs to be because look at all the free agents that are left in baseball. There's it's just the days of guys going out there and getting two hundred million dollars and one hundred and eighty million like fucking Jason Hayward somehow fleecing the Cubs like he did. Those days are dying off. Because with analytics being so pronounced in baseball now, and with the with the luxury tax um, cap now, teams aren't going to be so willing to go out there. You know, hey, Albert Pujols is out there. I'm going to give him, you know, fucking $214 million when he's 31 and look at him now. You know, you're paying for his decline years. And I think teams are done shelling out big, big money for guys on decline years. No, guys like Giancarlo Stanton and Manny Machado next year and Bryce Harper next year, you know, that's a different story. These guys are pre-peak prime years you know so they're gonna make a fuck ton because of that but you know when you get guys like eric eric hosmer who's coming into 30 or is at 30 or like lorenzo kane got five for what 85 or 75 i can't remember you know the the contracts gonna be a little bit smaller look at jd martinez you know he's past 30 you know you're gonna be have a couple prime years but you're gonna be paying for a couple of decline years at premium price you know, teams aren't going to be so willing to pay for it. So I think the styles that the Cubs and Astros have, have built with the youth movements. and Hell, even like someone like Colorado. Colorado has a really nice blend of, of homegrown players like Charlie Blackman, uh, DJ LeMayhew, Trevor Story, Nolan Arenado. I mean, they did a fucking really good job of blending these guys together. So... It's just going to be a different kind of team, a different kind of excitement, a lot more, a lot of youth to look forward to, and, and just a lot of, you know, who's going to be here over the next couple of years and just watching these guys grow and hopefully blend and make a championship team. So that's all I got for you guys today. Like I said, I'm going to come back on here and make a spring trading preview uh, once uh, the roster's a little bit more.